Hi, I'm Rob Robillard. Today's Concrete Carpenter Show, we're going to show you how to install a bulkhead door. This particular bulkhead door is made by Bilco, and the interesting part about this is it's a powder coated finish. And a powder coated finish is a, is a really cool uh, coating. It's, it's a paint finish, but it's different than brushing or rolling it on. It's actually a dry powder that is applied electrostatically and then it's cured under heat. And the best part about it is it gives you a way more durable finish, a way more uniform and thicker finish. And the, the, the benefits from that are resistance to scratching, resistance to chipping, and obviously resistance to uh, fading from the sun and, and the elements. A couple of things I want to mention is the, uh, the Bilco door comes in a box. It gets shipped to you where you pick it up at the, at the uh, lumber yard. And it just, it just bolts together. It's basically an erector set. The key parts is to get it level and securing it to your bulkhead and your bulkhead foundation. There's a couple of other things that I want to mention that do not apply here is uh, if you have a rubble staircase or maybe an uneven or damaged staircase, Bilco actually sells these plates. They call them foundation plates. And they line up and lay in this area here. And they, they're designed so that you can use concrete and mortar to level the surface so you can mount your bulkhead to it. One more thing that's important to mention is gutters or rain diverters are an absolute must over a bulkhead. Bulkheads, they have overlapping and interlapping uh, doors and flanges to keep the weather out. But if, if the rain is just pouring off the roof and splashing onto it, it's going to find its way in. So gutters and rain diverters are a must. The Bilco door has come in four colors. White, sandstone, light gray, and brick. We went with white to take some of the, the heat off of the sun. We also picked the hottest and most humid day to do this. It's already sweating. Let's, let's talk about what I've started already. And basically, we had to remove the old door. And in order to do that, we also had to remove some of the siding because there's a flange. There's a flange on this top piece that the siding actually covers. And not only should you cover it with siding, but we're going to cover it with a rubber membrane made by Vicor. I picked the stuff up from Concord Lumber. It's a rubber membrane, and it's going to cover this joint here under the, under the flashing so that any splashing water will not find its way into the basement entryway. Once this bulkhead is, is basically reinstalled, we can tie in the siding and trim again, and that, that's the easy part. So what I did is these were three pieces, four bolts. I bolted them together, I left them a little loose till I got them level, I plumbed the sides, and then I secured them to the house. It's that simple. Once that was done, I tightened all the bolts, and then I secured them to the foundation. Okay, so what we did is we put it in place, we squared our corners, and we lined it up, and, and there's this big oval slots here that give you a little bit of play and some shift. I marked those oval slots. I'm going to drill a hole for the masonry in the center. That'll give me room to move it forward or backward. Okay, so we're going to lift this off, and once this is ready and drilled, we're going to lift this up and slide this whole unit under because this overlaps to keep the water out. So let's lift this right off. Down on the other ends, there is, um, there's a slot here, but I can't get my wedge bolts in with my, my uh, drill driver, unfortunately, because the way the slope of the bulkhead, I'm not going to be able to get this in. So what I'm going to do, I, I probably can skip drilling these holes and just drill these three here, but I'm going to put them in anyway because I, I like to do that. I'm going to put in a wedge anchor. It's a wedge at the bottom and a nut and bolt. You drill a 3 8 hole, it goes down into it, and as you tighten the nut and bolt, as it pulls up, the wedge gets tighter and expands and actually holds it in. It works pretty well. So I'm going to put two of these in because I'll be able to get a ratchet set or a wrench in there, no problem.
Okay, the frame is on. We still have to tie in the house and make it waterproof. We've got a couple of rain clouds closing in on us now. But the next thing to do is to put the doors on. The doors are very heavy. I've got one on either side of me. And the nice thing about them is they have these gas lift assisted pistons that allow the door to open and close without slamming and chipping. So it protects the paint as well as it, you know, anybody can open these doors. So that's a really nice thing. I will tell you they're heavy as a bear to lift, but once the assist is on and they're on their hinges, they'll be easy. This is a gas-powered piston. It's a lowering piston, and there's just uh, these knobs here, and it just snaps on to the knob like that. And this one snaps on here. Nice and easy. Very nice. Well, that's it. We're finished. It was actually pretty easy. Start to finish, it probably took, well, start to this point, it probably took about four hours. And we've got another hour or two to, to finish up the siding. I'm gonna guess that, you know, if you're gonna plan this, like I said, it's a moderate level difficulty for a do-it-yourselfer, plan a day and make sure you have a helper to help carry the doors and the frame and move things around, because things do get heavy. I just want to point out a couple of the high points, at least for me, what impresses me about the Bilco doors. They've been around for years and they've been making high quality, heavy gauge steel basement entry doors. I really like the powder coat finish. Can't say enough about it. It's superior, it's durable. You cannot achieve a better finish than a powder coat finish. The beauty of power coating is it's 100% recyclable. What I mean by that is in the manufacturing process when they're applying that powder electrostatically, any powder that, that doesn't get applied falls down. They, they collect it and they reapply it or put it back in the bin and resend it through the machine. 100% recyclable and low VOC, which is a, a volatile uh, organic compound, which is that odor, that nasty smelling odor, environmental damaging stuff that goes into the air. Low VOC, 100% recyclable. It's easy to operate. The door latches and locks, it's secure. And the gas piston, assist pistons, really impressed me this time around. Those are fairly new for me. I haven't seen too many of those. A child car could operate these doors. They open and close easily. So all of those things for me really highlight this door as a high quality basement entry door. One more thing I want to mention is that these doors, they meet the 2012 IRC building codes, which is the International Residential Code for Emergency Egress. And that means that the, the state and the, the country, the state building codes, they recognize that these doors are allowable for egress out of a basement. If you have a basement entryway or a basement office or bedroom or something, that's a recognized egress. Well, let's get started putting the clapboards on and just wrap this project up. Let's get going.